Now that Sean Payton is the next head coach of the Denver Broncos, how does it impact Russell Wilson, George Payton, and their offseason moves? You get that from the South Stands to the end zone on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode, Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. The Broncos, as we all know, have their next head coach in place with Sean Payton. How does that impact the widespread operation of the franchise? You'll get that on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, free and available everywhere you get your podcast in audio format or whether you're watching us on YouTube, do us a favor, hit that subscribe or that follow button so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, coverage, and more all throughout the offseason because for the true fan, there is never an offseason. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter from Mile High Sports, joined alongside, as always, by my co-host and my good friend, Sarah Bettinger, site expert, put on the orange.com. The aftermath, Sarah, of the Sean Payton hires definitely has everybody in Broncos country stirring and discussing, debating, as we've seen in our YouTube comments, we've seen on Twitter. I would say that there's a good portion of the fan base that are super excited about Sean Payton now being the next head coach of the Broncos. And then there's also, I think, a, you know, a portion of the fan base that wanted somebody else, which, I mean, I think everything at this point is fair. I think we all have to just wait and see what happens with the on-field stuff. And hey, if the Broncos are winning, you know what? Everybody's going to be excited. Nobody's going to be caring about the hire. So something to consider here. But now that we've talked about it on yesterday's Breaking News podcast, today we get to focus a little bit more on how does this impact other areas of the team? Excited to break it all down with you, my man. I can't wait, Cody. I absolutely love it. I think the discussion in the comments has been mostly great. Obviously, you know, just the reaction on Twitter. It's fun to see people getting excited about the Denver Broncos, right? I mean, the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl. That's not much to be excited about. But look, when you're off to this good of a start in the offseason, you get Sean Payton, who was arguably the best possible candidate. And not only arguably the best possible candidate, Cody, but I would say, just like we talked about yesterday, probably the best candidate for specifically Russell Wilson, which was a huge discussion point leading up to this you know, day where the Broncos traded for Peyton. It's like, who could they bring in to fix Russ? Who could they bring in that maybe, maybe they're not tied to Russell Wilson beyond this season, but at the same time, could they get the best out of Russell Wilson? And if so, that's really the best case scenario for all parties involved. I think Sean Payton coming in is the best thing for Russell Wilson. He's the most proven NFL play caller. Obviously, we saw no, no disrespect to Jim Harbaugh, of course. It's fantastic when he was in the NFL with the San Francisco 49ers. But Sean Payton, over the course of 15 years, we've we've talked about this. 12, I think 12 or 13 different top 10 scoring offenses or yardage. I mean, all of these different things, Cody. We'll, we'll hear more about you know his resume as, the, as time goes along here. But it really speaks for itself. He's been one of the best offensive minds in the game. And I think, you know, it was put really well. Uh, I was watching Good Morning Football on on Wednesday, and they were talking about, you know, there's no, there's not Drew Brees without Sean Payton. Quarterbacks need good coaches. And that's so true. And I think that there's a degree to that with some guys. But, man, how how often did we see, you know, it it was Tom Brady with Josh McDaniels. Those two guys did great things together. And then with Bruce Arians, another great offensive mind with Tom Brady, you can point to any number of quarterbacks, Cody, but I think obviously Russell Wilson is one who needs that good coaching, needs that voice, needs that scheme with him. And I think Sean Payton's going to give it to him. Well, and I think as you and I talked about various times and some of the stuff I reported here from what we noticed on practice, like with Nathaniel Hackett, with Russell Wilson, those two guys didn't have like this, I would say, great relationship, right? I mean, they didn't even like – there was nothing that showed that they didn't have a great relationship, but you could just tell by watching and practice. Like there were times where Nathaniel Hackett just looking at the offense. Clint Kubiak's doing all the coaching. Nathaniel Hackett isn't doing anything with wasn't saying or doing anything with Russ there. Everything I think from a PR standpoint, I just don't know if Nathaniel Hackett was the right guy for a guy like Russell Wilson. But obviously, you and I have talked about it on this show. 
you don't make a hire solely based on Russell Wilson, right? But you want to bring in a guy who can maybe use his experience to take what he knows to also combine with what Russ is good at, what Russ knows, and try to find a middle ground there. I think Sean Payton probably is a good coach here for a guy like Russell Wilson. You've alluded to it many times on this show, especially when Russell Wilson was still in Seattle and was looking at potential trades to various teams. The New Orleans Saints were literally at the top of his list. So everything kind of aligns there. And we all know this. Russell Wilson's very close to Drew Brees. You know who Drew Brees is very close with? Sean Payton. So I'm sure there's been a lot of communication through some back channels between those guys. But I think one thing that we have to highlight here is this Broncos offense has to be designed, I think, in a way that takes a lot of the pressure off of Russell Wilson. If your quarterback has all the pressure to succeed, and this is not just for the Broncos, this is for every NFL team. If your quarterback is feeling all this pressure, more than likely it's not going to be sustainable. You're not probably going to have long-term success there. That's why you have to have balance. That's why you have to find other areas of your offense to alleviate that pressure. And you know how you do that, and I think we saw it in the final two games. You find a way to run the football effectively well. What has Sean Payton always done wherever he's been as the head coach? Obviously in New Orleans. He's had a strong running game, and then they've had a really good passing game outside of that. I think Denver has, I think, maybe the perfect formula here. There's obviously some of the places that need to be you know, addressed, especially in the offensive line, but I think that everything is there for the Broncos to kind of make this happen. Well, and I think Sean Payton has acknowledged exactly what you're talking about, right? I mean, Jeff Duncan, who was part of this whole saga of reporting <laughs> and you know different things that we had heard about through the process, he spoke with Sean Payton after the, the news and the announcement that he was getting traded to the Denver Broncos. And here's what Sean Payton had to say about Russell Wilson specifically. This is from Jeff Duncan's post. He says, Russell is a hard worker. Pressure is on us to put a good run game together and reduce the degree of difficulty on his position. I'm excited about him. I think that's a, a great way of putting it, Cody, because you do, for the quarterback position, you want to reduce the degree of difficulty, right? I mean, and Russell Wilson has made it look easy when he has increased the degree the degree of difficulty, right? Downfield throws, getting outside the pocket, making plays where there is none. He has done such a great job throughout the course of his career of making the hard things look easy. But now at this stage of his career, it's let's make the game easier for Russ to let him do what he does best, to have him feel free in doing what he does best. I think that was what we saw a lot of last season was a lot of, man, we're making the position way too hard for him. And we've even heard rumors about, and the offense was just so complicated, right? And you can speak more to that too, Cody. But just the fact of the fact is this: the Broncos desperately need somebody to come in. Remember, we talk plenty throughout the season how they're making the simple things look difficult. They need a coach like Sean Payton to come in and help make those simple things look easy again, right? We we I remember feeling so jealous at one point during the season of the, watching the Miami Dolphins with Skylar Thompson score in a red zone opportunity. And I was like, why is it so easy for them? Right. And I think it all comes back to coaching and how hard you make things for your players by trying to force fit a scheme to the players instead of the players to the scheme. Great way to put it there, my friend. And obviously for the Broncos, they'll continue to navigate this offseason with everything in mind of helping improve areas of need to ensure that the Broncos have the best chance to win games even more going into next season. And part of that also plays into how will Sean Payton and the trade for him and the hire of him as the next head coach, how will it impact the Broncos' offseason moves that could be upcoming with free agency and the NFL draft? You get that on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. This episode of the show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. And this year, the only app that you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And we're really excited about our new sports betting partner here at Lockdown because they are the number one sports book in America. FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet, and you'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown, whether it's any time touchdown. First touchdown of the game, they have it all at FanDuel. And the FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use, super easy to navigate. And best of all, you get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash Locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. 
How will the hire and the trade of Sean Payton as the next head coach of the Denver Broncos impact the team's offseason moves in free agency, potentially the NFL draft? We're going to break that down on today's episode of the show. Just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country who tunes in and makes Lockdown Broncos their first listen of the day every single day. We have you covered with the latest news, what's going on in Dove Valley. Go to press conferences, practices, training camp, and you get all that coverage here exclusively in one place. And the best part about it is we have you covered all year long so make sure you hit that subscribe or that follow button on your favorite audio podcasting platform or whether you watch on youtube continuing on here sarah i mean our, our discussion is okay now that the broncos have their next head coach in place it allows you and i to look at things from a team building perspective we can look at certain things that maybe sean payton was able to do in his time in new orleans how many you know players at a specific group he kept when he was the head coach I, it gives us a lot of things to look at but for the broncos now the focus shifts to the offseason. How can the Broncos upgrade their roster? How can they make moves that's going to make them better, more competitive on the field, especially inside the AFC West? All things considered, Sean Payton, in order to get him, the Broncos traded their 29th overall pick in this year's NFL draft. They traded a 2024 second rounder, but they were able to get New Orleans 2024 third rounder next year. And on top of that, they have a first round pick next year. So, this whole notion that the draft capital stuff is all gone. Like, Denver's not going to have a first and a second this year. But you know what? They got 68, they got 69, and they're also going to look heavily in free agency to upgrade various positions. Well, it's nice to have those draft picks that they still have, Cody, right? And you and I have talked about that before. But I think that for sure, free agency takes on a completely different complexion at this point, right? You have new ownership, which at this time last year, you did not have. So now you have cash-rich owners. You have a new head coach they brought in. You have Russell Wilson, who is, I would say, in a pretty slim window at this point, given the given what we saw in 2022. What you need to do with no first-round pick, no second-round pick, is you need to be ultra, ultra-aggressive in free agency. And I, I guess we'll see exactly what that means, you know, in terms of will the Broncos go after a bunch of the best unrestricted guys? Will they wait for certain cap casualties? Will they be in as they have not really been in recent years, Cody, on the market for players that maybe are salary dumps for other teams that you have to actually trade draft capital for? Look, just, just because the Broncos don't have a first or second now, don't rule them out on those potential salary cap dump trades for mid to late round draft picks as we've seen. George Payton likes to do the little pick swap thing where he'll send you a pick, you send the player and a pick back so that he still has the same number of darts, just different rounds. That is going to completely change. The, the, not having a first or second round pick, but trading for Sean Payton, trading for Russell Wilson, that is going to drastically change the complexion of this offseason for the Broncos. They are, I, I feel, Cody, I believe they're going to be extremely aggressive in pursuing upgrades to the roster whatever that looks like. And I think that it's going to be, you know, from a variety of different ways, it's going to be unrestricted free agents. It's going to be cap casualties. It's going to be salary dump trades. The Broncos are going to be willing to take on different contracts like that. And I think that also you got to think that players that are looking to be, you know, I mean, salary dumps for teams that they may look at the Broncos situation and say, Hey, trade me to Denver. I want to play for Sean Payton. That could be another huge advantage as well. I think the appeal definitely has changed, right? With a guy like Sean Payton, who many view as a very, very good coach. I mean, that's the widespread talk. I mean, even former Bronco Emmanuel Sanders says, hey, the Broncos are getting a great coach. I mean, Emmanuel had a brief stint being able to play for Sean Payton, so he would know. I trusted on his authority there. We've, we've had a lot of great conversations. Obviously, our good friend Ross Jackson at Lockdown Saints has provided a lot of great intel on Sean Payton as well. So that stuff right there is interesting. It's good to know. Uh, you mentioned the whole salary cap thing, right? Yesterday's episode before the trade even happened, we even broke things down uh, from a standpoint of who could be restructuring their contract in Denver to reduce the salary cap, you know, and, and expand what Denver has overall going to 2023. But as you mentioned, you have cash rich owners who are willing to, as we've seen, pay any expense necessary to make the Broncos better. That gives me optimism for that March 15th league year that's coming around the corner. I'm excited about it there. Um, I, I like that you mentioned, too, especially some of these salary dumps potentially. I've seen a lot of people throw out the, maybe the idea, the hypothetical, that Michael Thomas, who I think when you look at him, 
gosh, at one point in his career was unbelievable. One of the best wide receivers in the game. But injuries have impacted him, right? I've seen a lot of talk from Saints fans that, oh, you know, they might release Michael Thomas and he might go sign on Denver on a one-year prove-it deal or something like that. That would be interesting, but... I. <laughs> We already saw Tim Patrick, though. I liked what Tim Patrick said. I don't know if you saw that on Twitter. He posted a picture, had a picture of George Payton, and it said, F them picks. And he, like, he had the Bronco emoji. Like, he was ready to rock and roll. So I know Tim's excited to come back. You have Jerry Judy. He's going to be a contract year. I mean, how would maybe something like that impact the Broncos bringing in another wide receiver? I mean, to me, right now, anything's on the table, considering that it is a brand new coach in Sean Payton who's going to bring in some of his own guys. Well, I think maybe as we could talk about more over the course of the offseason, could that mean that Cortland Sutton becomes a big time trade candidate for your team? Like if you want to replace somebody in that current lineup offensively, I think Cortland Sutton would probably end up being that guy. You know, if you want to bring in a Michael Thomas or if you want to go out and take a swing at DeAndre Hopkins or something, there's going to be options, right? There's certainly been no shortage of wide receiver trades in the NFL the last couple of years, I don't think the Broncos are going to be exempt from that. And I know that Cortland had become a big leader on this team, finally was named the team captain in 2022, Cody. But to me, his situation is very, very fluid because we expected him to be the number one guy. And like you've mentioned before, I think I looked this up. Michael Thomas has like one fewer touchdown than Cortland. So he's both of these guys have struggled with injuries, right? They've they've only played a fraction of the game since 20. 20 remember when Cortland had the big injury Michael Thomas has like one fewer touchdown than Cortland Sutton although Sutton has played way more games so it's kind of an interesting situation the Broncos are in do they look to move on from Cortland Sutton and if they do Michael Thomas makes a ton of sense because I know people want to get younger at every position and things like that but man Michael Thomas being 30 I think getting healthy he would be a big time pickup for the Broncos at a position of need. Wide receiver is a big, big position of need for this team, Cody. And I know listeners don't want to hear that because on paper, you got Sutton, you got Judy, you got Tim Patrick coming back, you got KJ Hamler. We talked about that last year and we didn't see it. You need to make upgrades at wide receiver this year. Michael Thomas would be a fascinating one. Well, Broncos country, we are eager for your thoughts down below. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you comment, like the video, share it for the algorithm. Or if you're on Twitter and you want to share your thoughts on the show, you want to share your Broncos analysis, you can always tweet us on Twitter at Cody Rourke NFL, at Sir Bettinger, at Lockdown Broncos. One thing we're going to dive into on today's episode of the show is how does the arrival of Sean Payton impact George Payton? Yes, it's a Peyton party in Denver. You get that on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. This episode of the show is brought to you by our friends at Price Picks. And with the Price Picks app, you get to pick two to six players, and if they will go score more or less in their Price Picks projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. Price Picks is daily fantasy sports done right. These players, they'll have a projection that is set by Price Picks, and you simply choose whether or not they will have more or less in their Price Picks projection. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections that are available. Download the Price Picks app or go to PricePicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. And first-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. If you deposit $100. Price Picks is going to give you $100. If you deposit $50, Price Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code Locked On at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Some of the long standing rumors about the Broncos' head coaching search is that George Payton was suddenly being phased out of the organization. Come to find out, George Payton was heavily involved the entire time time. Thank you so much, Broncos Country, for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day, free and available everywhere you get your podcast and audio format, or whether you watch on YouTube. This is a very interesting discussion, I think, that needs to be had, because for the Walton Penner Family Ownership Group, this is their first ever head coaching hire in their tenure as the new Broncos ownership, being firmly in place now. And a lot of people we're reading into so many different things that are being put out there. Oh, George Payton's not going to be as involved. Oh, George Payton's being demoted. Things that you and I have talked about and said, that's not true here on this show. And come to find out, I mean, George Payton was more involved than people think and was crucial in the hire of Sean Payton. So now that Sean Payton is a member of the Broncos, 
how might this impact George Payton, right? As we mentioned, the Payton party is here in Denver. We don't want to throw Peyton Manning in there. There's two different, there's three different ways to spell it. P-E-Y-T-O-N, P-A-T-O-N, and P-A-Y-T-O-N. So, like I said, a Payton party in Denver. How does this impact everything, Sarah, in your opinion? Well, I think first and foremost, you need to get George Payton, Sean Payton, and Peyton Manning together, and they need to do the Spider-Man meme, you know, pointing at each <laughs> other. So it can be like the Payton version of that. I would love to see something like that. But I think in terms of just the football side of things, you know, uh, it's it's always interesting to to look at the, you know, behind the scenes stuff as much as you possibly can. I know George Payton's wife is pretty active on social. She has a blog that people have read and got some nuggets before. Uh, specifically talking about how tough it was in the past, you know, last year for George to fire Vic Fangio. And she mentioned that in one of her blog posts. And I think that there's something to be said for when she posts something Broncos related. She recently posted Cody about how excited they were to welcome Sean Payton and his family to the Denver Broncos organization. I think you're absolutely right. I think that George has played a much bigger part in this than maybe it seemed. I know there were some reports that, uh, it felt like he was taking a step back in his involvement, right? But in reality, what have we seen? Well, we saw him pretty much involved in every step of the process, except for going to John Harbaugh's place in Ann Arbor. That, we basically saw George Payton involved in every piece of this coaching search. So now the question becomes, how well will he work with Sean Payton? Or will that be the case? I know there's been rumors about does Sean Payton want to bring Ryan Pace, the former Chicago Bears GM who has ties to the Saints, obviously? Does he want to bring him with him and work in a front office capacity? Is he the one that he wants to kind of, you know, bounce ideas off of? Will the Broncos maybe add him to the front office regardless? I know they already have an assistant GM in Darren Muji. They have Brian Stark and Muji out at the, you know, the senior bowl where George Payton is not currently. So I don't know. I'll be fascinated to see, like, can these two guys get along? It was that part of the, you know, interview process to say, hey, do you feel like you could work with George? Like, we feel like he's one of the best GMs in the league. How do you feel about working with him? I don't know. As time plays out, Cody, it will be fascinating to see. But that's, I mean, maybe the biggest question right now. You know, one thing I think to keep an eye on in this whole situation, Sarah, as it pertains to Sean Payton, George Payton, a lot of people said, well, you know, Sean Payton doesn't want to work with the GM. Well, during his time with the New Orleans Saints, obviously there was a general manager in place. You have to have that. I mean, if you don't have that, it's almost like a Bill Belichick situation where Bill Belichick is pretty much running the operation under Robert Kraft. And here's the thing, okay, as we all know, George Payton, Sean Payton, both these guys will report directly to Greg Penner, and, and they're going to work together. They're going to collaborate. And I will say for George Payton, like he has collaborated with Vic Fangio. He's collaborated with Nathaniel Hackett. He's asked them, what do you need that make, you know, feels like you could be successful as a head coach? What is it that you need? He's gone out and he's gotten them that. And I think that is very important. I also think for George Payton, you don't necessarily have to worry right now with Sean Payton, especially knowing that like, you have an experienced coach who knows what he's doing. You don't have to kind of like micromanage or oversee, like watch what's going on and be like, ah, I don't know about this. I'm excited to see how this dynamic works, especially in the NFL draft where Denver still has some picks. They're not going to have the premier picks that everybody likes, but as you mentioned, they could always develop more picks as well in the process. So we'll see how things go. As you mentioned, Brian Stark, Darren Muji, very well respected. And I'll, I'll even say this too. Insiders like Adam Schefter, apparently who I sound like, Ian Rappaport, they, they've publicly stated throughout this whole entire process how well-respected George Payton is around the NFL from various, ex you know, not to mention his peers voted him as the most trustworthy general manager. George operates in that fashion. He's collaborative in nature. I think that's a great thing to have. I think that can only benefit a guy like Sean Payton. And when you have the, the opportunity with the cash-rich ownership that you have that's willing to spend any, you know, amount of money, the unlimited resources at Sean Payton's disposal now, to me, it just tells you, okay, hey, Denver is looking to build something special here. Now, you have to see the on-field results kind of play out in and of itself, but the reality of the situation is Denver is going all in, and these moves signify just that. So Broncos country, hold tight. Obviously, we'll have to reserve our judgment for how things look on the field. I don't expect perfection at first, but I do expect better progress. I do expect a better product 
for this Broncos team immediately next season in comparison to what we got this past year. So Broncos country, thank you so much for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. You can get this podcast, like I mentioned earlier, on your favorite audio podcasting platforms or whether you watch on YouTube. We appreciate you so much taking time out of your day to listen or to watch and to talk all things Broncos football with other members of Broncos country here on the show. We'll see you tomorrow for a brand new episode, Lockdown Broncos.